Let's have a look at the cross-section profiling tools. To draw a cross-section in an image, simply select one of the profiling tool buttons. This tool will place a horizontal profile in your image, and this tool will place a vertical profile. And finally, this tool will let you draw a profile of any length and direction. All cross-sections can be moved around and their endpoints can be positioned freely. When a cross-section is selected in the image window, you can move it up or down one scanline at a time using the keyboard up-down arrow buttons. Or you can move it one data point left or right by pushing the left-right arrow buttons on the keyboard. To remove a cross-section, simply select it and push the delete button on the keyboard. Or use the delete option from the right-click menu. To remove all, either first select all and click delete, or click the clear all curves button in the ribbon. For quickly drawing many identical cross-section profiles, just draw one and then duplicate the profile multiple times by repeatedly pushing Ctrl-D on the keyboard. Afterwards, you can select all profiles by Ctrl-A and adjust their positions collectively, maintaining the same relative distance between them. Sometimes you want a short cross-section profile, but still aligned in either X or Y. To align horizontally, simply select the relevant cross-section and push the button for the letter X on the keyboard. Likewise, push the Y button for vertical alignment. In this way, you do not need to struggle with accurately positioning the endpoints of the cross-section. In fact, if you hold down the X or Y button while resizing a cross-section, it will automatically stay aligned. Please note that if no cross-sections are selected and you push the X or the Y button on the keyboard, a new horizontal or vertical profile will be created. You also find shortcuts to the profiling tools on the floating toolbar above the right-click menu. In this way you can work fast and do not need to switch forth and back between ribbon tabs so often. All cross-section profiles are displayed in the profile window. You can browse through your profiles by clicking the arrows or by simply selecting them in the image. The profile windows offers two views. This view is called analysis view because it allows you to drag cursors in your profile and take measurements. Therefore, in analysis view you work on one profile at a time. The cursor positions and distances are read out in the right side of the window. You can have up to four cursor pairs. Note that you may even move the cursors inside the image window in order to position them precisely over image features. By using the Copy Cursor Values option available on the right-click pop-up menu, the cursor readouts can be copied and pasted into, for example, Excel easily. Use the buttons in the view panel in the ribbon to quickly adjust the y-axis scaling. 
auto scale will continuously adapt the y-axis scale according to the profile data. Freeze axis will fix the scale at the current value. One to one will give you a view where the x and y axis magnifications are the same. In this field, you can not enter a value, but you can scroll through a range of nice values, a fast way of setting the y axis length to a nice round figure. Note that more detailed display options are available in the View Settings panel. Click here to toggle to Comparison View. In Comparison View, you can compare all the profiles. You can even move profiles interactively which makes it easy to compare features. In addition, you can average the shown profiles. The mean curve, or any curve, can be extracted to a new window for further analysis. Now to some more advanced features and tips. Averaging. By pulling the small triangles in the middle of a profile, you can average the profile over several lines. This is a big help when measuring small step heights on rough surfaces. For each cursor pair, the mean value between the cursors is reported. For every two set of cursor pairs, the difference between those mean values for the pairs is also reported. This again is useful when trying to measure heights on rough surfaces. Synchronization With multi-channel images, it is essential to be able to analyze the exact same cross-section from the different images. To help doing this, SPIP has the Profile Synchronize feature. In this example, three channels of an 8-channel recording have been opened. We first draw a cross-section profile in any of the three images. Then we click the Synchronize button, and profiles appear in the other images at the exact same positions. We can now move the profiles around while the three images will stay synchronized. As usual, there's one profile window per image. In order to overlay the profiles for better comparison, SPIP has the Global Profile Comparison window. Click this button to enable it. Now all three profiles are displayed on top of each other. Because the units are different, the, the y-axis is now just a relative scale. The Global Profile Comparison window is also used for comparing cross-sections from images which are not part of the same recording. They can be at different magnifications, or one can for example be an SEM image and the other an AFM image. In this case, we have on the left side an AFM image and on the right side an image of the same surface recorded with an interference microscope or optical profiler. 
Let us first open the Global Profile Comparison window. Right now it is empty. Note the scratches forming a characteristic triangular structure in both images. We'll now draw a cross-section from this point to this point on both images. In the global comparison window, we can now fine adjust the position of the two profiles in order to compare them better. The higher resolution of the AFM is clearly observable. For drawing freeform cross-section profiles, SPIP has the Polyline Profiling tool. Click the Tool button and add nodes by clicking the left mouse button. End by clicking the right mouse button. You may also draw freely by holding down the left mouse button while drawing still ending by a right click. There can only be one polyline profile at a time, so delete the old one before drawing a new. One of the most common uses of the polyline profiling tool is to measure distances along worm-like structures such as DNA strings. When the objects in the image can be detected by the particle and pore analysis feature in SPIP, this is easy. In this example we have performed a particle detection. Now select one of the strings. In the drop-down menu on the polyline button you will see an option called Make Polyline from Fiber. Click this option and SPIP will create a polyline profile along the center line of the string. Select another worm and repeat the procedure. Distances can now be measured using cursors. Thank you for your attention.